Okay, welcome to another video. So today we're going to get to have a final look at Deep in version 20 now that it's got its final release after being in beta for quite a long time. So we've downloaded the ISO which is about 2.5 GB in size and we're going to install it to this laptop natively. Now we've already selected English and agreed to the user agreements so we can click next. Okay, so create partitions, make sure you have backed up important data, then select the disk to install, and you can also go into advanced here. So you're going to notice that by default, Deepin sets up quite an elaborate partition scheme. So if we click this disk here, you'll see that we get multiple partitions, and they are a boot EFI of 300 megabytes, a boot of 2 GBs at EXT4, a root of 15 GB at EXT4, and then a root B at 15 GB EXT4, a data partition which is going to be where the majority of our storage goes at 177 GB. We then get a 14 GB recovery and finally we have a swap partition of 16 GB which should be just about enough to enable full hibernation on this laptop which is something we will test out once we are fully installed. So you'll notice down here we can also do full disk encryption but we're going to skip that for this video and just go next. Okay, so here is where you can review your options and then commit to your full install. So I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. And as soon as I press continue, I'll start this stopwatch and then we can see just how long this takes to install. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so that installation has now complete and it took about 5 minutes and 17 seconds. And as for the installation, very quick and easy. I don't think anyone should really struggle getting that installed. Okay, installation has now complete at about 5 minutes and 17 seconds. So fairly quick and I don't think anyone could really have any trouble getting that installed. It should be pretty easy for most people. So what we're going to do now is reboot. I do believe there's one more section we need to go through where we'll create user accounts and connect to a network, etc. Right, so here we are at our login screen. I don't think there's too much going on here, but we'll quickly have a look. So we have a power button here. We then have an on-screen keyboard button there. Clicking that should expose the keyboard, but it isn't. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. So there's our on-screen keyboard, and we also have a clock at the top and a logo at the bottom left. So let's log in. Okay, so here we are, our freshly installed deep in desktop. It is a very nice looking desktop, isn't it? So we're going to start with this little welcome screen here. There is a video here. I do believe it's just a little desktop tour, so we're just going to skip through that part and go next. Right, choose a desktop mode. So there's fashion and efficient. We're currently in the fashion mode, which is where it sort of slims down the panel just a little bit, puts a few gaps around it and rounds the corners. And it also moves all of your pinned applications from the left right into the middle. And then the efficient mode is the alternative mode, which is more of a traditional panel where it spans the whole length of your screen and it moves all of your applications that are pinned to the left and then you get two show desktop buttons. So you have one here in this normal view. When you're in efficient mode, you have another one at the end. So we're going to stick with fashion mode for now, but we will check out official mode at some point in the video. So let's go next. Okay, so choose a running mode. So I very briefly tested this out in a virtual machine before filming this to make sure everything works as it should. And we run it in normal mode, which is a scaled back mode where it doesn't have a lot of the fancy effects and transparency and rounded corners whereas effect mode is the fully fledged full deep in experience so we're going to stick with that one and go next okay so we can choose an icon theme here by default it's only giving us four to choose from and they're all pretty much from the same kind of pack they're just variations so we have bloom and bloom classic and then we have a dark and light theme for each version so we're going to go done and we're done so now we can start with the desktop so a right click or a two finger tap on your desktop will expose the menu here which is pretty standard stuff so you've got new folders new documents but then down at the bottom you have display settings which will open up the monitor settings inside your control center which we'll get to in a moment and then you have wallpaper and screensaver so if we press this you'll notice we do get quite a lot of nice wallpapers to choose from they do know how to design a decent desktop these guys and you also have a button here for window uh, wallpaper slideshow. So clicking that has exposed a little grid of options ranging from anywhere of 30 seconds all the way up to one hour, which is going to be the interval between each time it will change the wallpaper. 
30 seconds seems a bit excessive. I'm not sure who needs a new wallpaper every 30 seconds. 10 minutes is the default. I personally don't need a wallpaper to change all the time. So I'm going to go for when login. So every time we log in or restart the computer, we'll be greeted with a fresh wallpaper. So I haven't actually looked at any of these screensavers. So we have a little waiting time of one minute all the way up to one hour. By default, it's on never. And you can also set it to ask for a password when you wake it up from screensaver. So there does seem to be quite a few to choose from in here as well. Let's just have a little demo of a couple. Okay, and let's check out this little cube there as well. Not bad, but I'm going to do without one. So we're going to start with a panel at the bottom here. So starting from the right is your trash cam. Here we have our power buttons and clicking that, we then go into the full power off mode here where you have shut down, reboot, suspend, hibernate, which is something we will test out about halfway through this video. We then have lock and log out and a quick link to our system monitor. I do believe lock is pretty much the same as the login screen, but we'll double check. Yeah, it appears the same to me. I don't see any difference there. So we'll get back in and we'll quickly test out the system monitor as well. So here's the Deepin system monitor. And of course, because it's from the Deepin suite of applications, you can change the theme from light or dark, or you can just leave it to follow the system theme, but we'll get all into that in a moment as well. Okay, and then just to the next of it, we have the clock and a single tap will bring up your calendar, which of course is the deep in calendar. We then have a little on-screen toggle there for the on-screen keyboard, onboard keyboard. And the cool thing about this is if you hold this button, you can move it anywhere and you can resize it to pretty much cover the whole of your desktop. Now, I'm not sure how useful that would be on a sort of standard keyboard and mouse, but I can see it being quite useful for a touchscreen device and the cool thing about it is it remembers its position and size when you hide it. So if we hide it now and then show it again, as you can see, it's the exact same size and place that we left it before. <clears throat> so just next to it, we have the notification center with this little bell here. So clicking that will open up your notification center to like a slide out panel on your right there. And this little clear all button will then clear all application notifications that might be there. And this just tells you that you're on disturb mode. Next up, we have our system tray. Now, I really like what Deepin does here with this little toggle here. So if we press that, you can hide all of those indicators just to clear things up a bit when you don't quite need them. And then you can click it again to expose them. So you have your sort of disks and connected devices there. We have a Bluetooth toggle there and your power. And if you hover over it, it will give you a status of charging and how long left till it's full. Or if it's plugged in, um, plugged out, it will tell you how much is remaining. That's our wired connection and here's our volume. I am very quickly going to mute it while we're in the video and devices. I don't think we have any different devices we can change to on the laptop at the moment. And then we have the input window just here. So moving into the middle, here is all of your pinned applications. So every time you pin a new application, it will be at the middle here with the rest of your suite. And by default, we have the control center, calendar, music, album, app store, Firefox, and the deep in file manager. Moving towards the left, you have your multitasking view, which I actually really like. So let's open a few applications. So let's open files and control center. Now touching your multi multitask view, we'll spread them in a full screen view, like an overview. And you also have a desktop switcher to the top with a plus sign. So what this allows you to do is drag and drop any application you want to its own desktop. And then you could also drag it to the plus sign and then that will open up its own new desktop with that window inside. Then closing it, we we'll then move the window back to the one that it was in before. And as you can see, we're back to a two desktop with one window in each. Very cool. Now let's get back onto our desktop and look at some of the functions that we can do with our panel as well. So we're currently in fashion mode. So if we move to efficient mode, as you can see, it's shrunk it down in size, but it's also stretched it to each side of the screen. Move all our applications to the left. And everything's pretty much in the same layout apart from you now also have a show desktop button here. So if you press this little bit here, it will then show your desktop, pressing it again, will then bring your applications back. Now we already have one show desktop button here, so you might not need two. So another cool thing you can do, right click and go into plugins. And as you can see, all of these things with a tick next to them can be disabled. So there's one for trash, power, show desktop, onboard, 
notification center, multitasking view, and date time. So we could get rid of the show desktop button, which will remove it from the left side, and it will leave us with just the one on the right. Now let's go back into the efficient mode, or fashion mode, sorry. And as you can see, we don't have a show desktop button there anymore. So we're gonna put that one back in the plugins and it's back where it belongs. Now we also have some different modes or statuses. So keep showing us where it's gonna stay on your desktop all the time. And when you've got a full screen application, you do still get a bit of a gap on the taskbar here. So as you can see, it doesn't look quite right to me. So I would personally tend to just use the status smart hide which means anytime you've got a full screen application it will hide the dock or panel and then all you have to do is hover over it to reveal it again so you might have noticed we just got a notification pop up at the top center of the screen and we can view what that notification was by jumping back into our notification center and then we can dismiss it or clear it and then it's gone we have some different um, locations that you can also move it to so you have top bottom left right you might notice there is no size now so in previous versions of deep in you could change the size between pre-configured sizes like small large and medium however that doesn't appear to be present in this version of deep in 20 so let's see what it looks like at the top okay not too bad I still don't know if I like the gaps around it as much as it looks at the bottom so let's also try it on the left now Okay, that doesn't look too bad either. It kind of does remind me of a bit of Chrome OS, the way it's organized the panel when it's in this fashion mode. So let's pop it back at the bottom. At location and bottom. We won't put it on the right. No one uses panels on the right. Okay, so that's pretty much the panel. Now, the, multi, the um, launcher, I actually really do quite like. I prefer it in the small view that it's in right now, but there are some other new differences here that we'll go into in just a minute so in this view you have your uh, account sort of photo there and then you have some quick links to folders in your home folder like computer which is already open on another desktop and as you could see it went straight to that desktop and then you also have ones for you know like music videos etc then just below it you have a cog there for your control center which again is already open in this window uh, workspace there and then you also have a quick link to your power button as well, which is the same as the one we had over there. Now let's get back into it. So all of your applications are going to be in a view here and you can search through it and hit enter to traverse to whatever program you might want. Like so. And as you can see, Firefox is open nice and easy. And again, full screen will hide your menu or your panel. Now, if you wanted to go through by categories, you'd click all categories and then you jump into a category that corresponds with a type of application. So for music, you just jump into music and as you can see, Deep in Music is right there. Now, what seems to be new in this version is the full screen view. So this has always been how it looked on Deep in, uh, but since the older versions of Deep in, this button here would change categories to the left here, or about here where the mouse cursor is, you'd get some categories that you could click and jump to. What this will now do is pressing that, you'll get a full screen category view like this where each category has its own sort of window or folder. So we're currently in internet. You can go to music, video, graphics, office, system, and then anything that falls outside of these categories will be put in other. Now these are obviously automatically generated categories so there will be no moving things around when you install an application, it will go to the category that it corresponds with. So in the normal, just main screen view without the categories, again, you can just scroll your mouse or slide on your touchpad to then go to the next page of your applications. So applications wise, out of the box, you get a fair few applications installed. And the best ones I actually find are the deep in suite of applications. So starting in internet, you have Firefox as your default web browser, Thunderbird as your email client, your music player is Deep in Music, and we will check out the Deep in application separately after we've done everything else. Video is Movie, which is a Deep in application. Screen Capture, which is a very cool application, we'll check out in a moment. And Cheese, which I do believe is a new addition, and it's a webcam viewer. So in graphics, we have Deep in Image Viewer, Album, and Draw. 
In Office now you have Document Viewer, Text Editor, which is Deepin's own text editor, which is pretty cool. And again, you can also change the theme independent of the application and system theme. And it's a tabbed interface. And I like the way Deepin handles tabs, so it stays sort of in the title bar of the window, and it looks pretty, pretty sleek. So let's get out of that. <clears throat> and let's finish our little look at the applications. So we have the LibreOffice suite here, but because the Deepin is based on, I think the repo is based on like a Debian 10.5, the applications aren't going to be super new. So if we opened up LibreOffice Writer, for example, it's going to be a fairly old version. So let's double check that. Yeah, so you're looking at uh, version 6.1.5.2, which is pretty old now because we're on, I think, version 7 these days. So let's get out of that. And we have one more, no, two more folders to take a look at. So in system, you'll notice that when there's more applications in this window that can fit in this actual grid here, you'll have a little dot down the bottom, which will then take you to the next page and expose a few more programs. So inside system, we have the deep in file manager, the app store, the terminal, which again, I also quite like it. it functions much like the text editor does. So you have the tab view again, and then you can also again, change your theming. And if you go into settings, you can then change your opacity and color scheme and everything else. In fact, can you change your color scheme like that much? I'm not too sure that you can. No, you don't appear to have a lot of control over the actual color scheme from what I can tell. Interesting. I do quite like the actual terminal though. I think it's pretty sweet. So you can change the font size. You can change the opacity. Workspacing. Oh, cursor. No, I thought I said colors then I got excited. You can also blur the background. Let's try that out then. So let's go to blur and let's make it transparent. There we go, that looks quite nice actually. And then if we went to dark mode, which is what I like to have my all my theme on anyway. So let's go to dark. Okay, that looks kind of interesting actually. I think there's a bit too much transparency on that, but we'll leave it on that for now anyway. Okay, let's keep moving. So where are we? We were in system, wasn't we? So that was the terminal. Again, we have manual, system monitor, the boot maker, device manager, and we'll look at control center in just a moment. And then we also have a package installer, which is much like GDEB is. So if you want to install a .deb, you drag and drop the file there and it would install it for you pretty easily, pretty handy. Okay, I think that's for the most part all we really need to look at in the applications. I think we've got a hang of what we've got there, haven't we? And the partition manager, I do believe, is gparted. It is indeed. And there we can see the crazy partition scheme that they go for. And we definitely will test out this um, Hibernate with Swap in just a moment. Okay, so jumping into the control center now, I'm actually quite a big fan of the new control center. So in previous versions of Deepin, it all would open in a side panel onto the right. And I always felt it a bit too cramped and hard to find the specific settings you were looking for. It would open up in a panel much like the notification center does. I'm not too sure I think it works in a sort of settings application though. So I much prefer the categories in this window here. So starting with accounts, Deep in version 20 has expanded its support for fingerprint sensors. However, my laptop sensor doesn't seem to be picked up out of the box. So we'll have to skip that part. Again, you can change a little image there, change your name and password. And of course you can add new accounts by pressing the plus right there. Deep in ID is something that's only supported in mainland China. And what it is, is kind of like a cloud service that will remember app store email client browser and other cloud services unfortunately we can't test that out so we're going to go next okay so in your display settings which of course you can just jump into by going like that you have options for duplicate duplicate extend or customize you can also set your brightness in here as well as the color temperature and night shift so the screen hue will be adjusted according to your location i don't think i've set that properly yet so changing the color temperature manually like so we can make it a bit warmer to make things a bit easier on the eyes depending on how late in the day you are or of course we can just disable it and leave it as normal here is where you can set some display scaling some applications cannot be scaled with the specified settings in a multi-display environment okay here's pretty simple stuff you can set your default applications by default everything's pretty standard i don't know why 
text is LibreOffice, I'd probably have it as text editor. In music, of course, it's going to be the deep in music player. Movie is deep in movie. So in picture, you've got image view, I draw. I don't know why Firefox is there. It always sort of confuses me why like a web browser is an image. And then terminal, of course, is your deep in terminal. Now, I really quite like the default theming and how you can change it in this settings here. So you've got the default theme, which is light. You then have auto and then dark. So if we switch to dark, which is system wide, so every deep in application will change to dark unless you change it manually in the part here where it says theme. So we can even change the accent color, which is these parts you see here. So we're de default is blue, so we went to yellow. It's now changed those colors there to yellow, which looks quite nice actually, but we're gonna leave it on blue. So here is the Windows effect button. So pressing that will disable all of the fancy flashy animations and transparency and rounded corners. So let's test that out now. There we go. So as you can see at the bottom bar now, it's a fully solid black color. And it's a very square straight edge there on the corners as opposed to the rounded corners you saw before. And the same has happened to this window here. So now let's turn it back on and we are back to the, the rounded goodness. Right, okay. In icon themes now, there's not too much additional icons here. It's all pretty much bloom, but it does also include the Papyrus icon theme if you're a fan of Papyrus. So it's got a few icon theme, uh, cursor themes there, but again, I kind of just sit with default icon themes, of uh, cursor themes. I've never really been too fussed about cursors. And again, in your fonts now, you can change the size, default sizing, and the actual default fonts that you are using. So network stuff, pretty standard. You have access to VPN, system proxies, and an application proxy. What is cool though, you can very easily set up a little hotspot just by pressing that little toggle there. Okay, so next up we have application wide and notification. So what you can do with this, of course you also have the do not disturb there as well. And if you press that, you'll notice you've got a little strike through on our notifications now. And then pressing it again, it's back to normal. And we can hide that icon from dock as well if we didn't want it to be there. But I quite like it there. So we can set application specific notifications and actually settings for granular things like sound and all sorts so as you can see here let's say you had an appointment come from on calendar I don't know why it's not actually switching to calendar there there we go but say you didn't want it to play a sound say you was in a, an environment where you needed to be quiet you could then just untab that so you still get the notification through but it wouldn't show you any sound or play you any sound and you can also do show messages on lock screen or show only in notification center so if you didn't want it to come through at the top here you could have it so it only came through and you'd have to jump in here to see it. And you can do that for pretty much all applications that you'll see on your computer, <clears throat> including system animations there, which again, just go for do not disturb. Okay, there's not too much to say on sound apart from, I don't really like the deep in sound effects, so I tend to turn them off. It is nice to see though, that they have actually disabled by default the boot up and shutdown, because they were the most egregious to be honest with you. So let's disable that. Okay, Bluetooth, I'm not too sure I've got any Bluetooth devices around me at the moment, so it's probably not going to find anything. So let's go to date and time. Pretty standard stuff, so changing your time zone, time zone, and time settings. Now, power's pretty cool, so you'll notice that we're currently not on power saving mode because we're plugged in. If I unplug my power, watch this tab here, and the screen will also dim. There we go. So that is now automatically gone into power saving mode, so if we do it again, and put it back in. We are now back into normal mode. And also got a brightness there, which is going to set how much it decreases. And let's see if the keyboard shortcuts for brightness works out of the box. It does indeed. And we can set a few more things here. So obviously auto power saving on low battery. And then by default, it does show you the display capacity when you just go over it with your mouse or your cursor. Next up, we have mouse. Okay, so here you can just sort of disable your touchpad while typing. So let's test that out. Let's go into the text editor. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's remembered the text that we done on the last entry of this application, despite not saving it. So that could be a bit of a lifesaver here and there. If you've written something important, not saved it and accidentally closed it, it has like an auto remember feature. And I quite like that actually. I think that's pretty cool. Huh, okay, right, so I'm going to just start typing and now I'm going to try and move the cursor. No luck. Now I'm going to move the cursor and start typing. Perfect, that works absolutely fine. 
Okay, so let's see what else we've got. We can also go to left hand. Uh, we can change the point of speed for the mouse. We've got acceleration enabled. And we can disable the touchpad when the mouse is connected. That's also quite handy. Now in touchpad, by default, it has tap to click, which is perfect. Natural scrolling is disabled, good. And we also have palm detection, okay. So disable the option if your touchpad doesn't work after enabled. Let's test it. It does work. Fine, we can leave that enabled. Okay, here's our keyboard settings. So repeat delay is basically the time it takes when you hold down a key and it will sort of repeat the character and there's the, the rate of it there as well. So let's jump into keyboard layout. English UK is correct. Oh, it's got the wrong language. So let's add to British English, which is right about there. So let's go to add. And now if we just click British English, we'll then get a notification saying it's installing the required language packs. And then we should get another notification saying it's done. So system language has changed. Please log in and log back out. We'll do that in a moment. But of course, with anything, you can then check your notifications all in your control centers notifications there. Okay, let's have a look at some of these shortcuts. So we also have a Quake window terminal. I didn't know that. So if we press Alt F2, we'll then get a drop down terminal like so. And as you can see, it's still got the transparency that we set in the previous terminal. So it's the same terminal, it's just in the drop down mode. So now if we press Alt F2, we can then get rid of that one. So we've got window screenshots, pretty standard stuff. Show desktop, shut down. Okay, so we've got switch windows effects, which is shift, super and tab. So this is quite cool. Shift, super, tab. Yeah, that worked really quick as well. So what that's done is basically disabled all of the Windows effects like we showed you earlier, but with a very simple keyboard shortcut. So if we press it again, we are back in our flashy animated mode. That's pretty cool. Clipboard. I didn't know we even had a clipboard. So Control Alt V. Let's have a look at this then. Nice. I really like that. Okay. So it's opened up a clipboard to the left, much like the notification center looks. So let's get some text and test out this clipboard. So let's open up our text editor again. And let's copy all of this jumbly nonsense. And let's now open up our clipboard. Oh, I really like that. That's very handy. So we could cancel or just close specific entries or just clear all. Let's try it uh, with another bit of text. Let's say Tyler. And now let's copy that. And there we go. No, I think that's a really handy clipboard feature to have actually built into your system. That's brilliant. And then clearing all, we'll get rid of that. Perfect. I really like that. And I'm really happy with this sort of auto remember feature on this text editor there as well. Okay, so let's see if there's any others we want to see. So switching the, uh, the, the workspaces is pretty simple. Super and then directional keys. And then to switch a window to a different workspace, it's shift plus super and directional keys. Nice. It's also a very smooth animation as well. Okay, updates. I noticed a problem when I was in a virtual machine with the updates that hopefully won't happen here. If it does, we'll have to just quickly fix that. So let's try an update. While it's looking, we also have the automatic update settings here. So by default, it will check for updates automatically and it will download them. But you can disable all of that if you'd rather summon updates on your own accord. So hopefully this update's going to work. If not, we're going to have to. Yeah, so there's a we're getting 404 on one of the repos. So if we go to sudo apt update in a terminal, we can double check what that repo is and we can just comment it out for the sake of this video. So we're getting a 404 on this printer eagle repo here. So what we're going to do is jump into our sources list. I do believe we've got Vim installed out of the box as well, which is pretty cool. I, I think we do anyway. I might be talking a bit too quick. We do indeed. Right, what we're going to do is jump down to printer list here. Hit enter, then hit I to go into insert mode. Put a little hash there, exit and then right quit. Now we're going to try and do the update once more. So let's check again. <clears throat> Brilliant. So the update is now working and we've got some system patches to get and FCITX sun pinion so let's go ahead and install these updates and what i'm going to do is pause the video here while it's updating and then once that's finished we'll be back where we left off okay that update has now completed and it's given us the option to either cancel and carry on with what we were doing or shut down or reboot so we're going to reboot and then we'll carry on where we are so we're in updates we've got system information and general settings to go 
then we'll be done with the control center so let's go and reboot now okay and we are back so let's just finish off in the control center and then we can have a look at some of the applications so we got all the way up to update so let's check out system information okay so pretty standard stuff here here you can see the information of your edition type and kernel and we're currently on 5.4.50 we also have links to our edition license and end user license agreement now in general settings so this is pretty cool actually we can kind of customize our grub screen all from within the control center here so as you can see it says click the option in boot menu to set it as first boot and then drag and drop a picture to change the background which is pretty cool and we can change the theming and start up today etc so let's get out of this now and now we can actually look at some of these deep in specific applications so I have got a USB stick somewhere with some files on, so let's just plug that in. And then we'll copy those files over and then we'll try it in their media applications. Do we get a notification that it's gone in? I don't think we did. Let's go into our files manager. And there it is, USB. So while we are here, we can check out the deep in file manager. Again, it doesn't have to follow the system theme like all of the deep in applications and you have connector server set a share password and settings here and we have some basic settings where we can open always open folder in a new window you can change from double click to single click if you're crazy and then you, um, you've got new window and tab so open from default window computer open new tab current directory so scrolling through we'll also go for all of the items there that's pretty cool so you can change the size, hidden folders, advanced, preview, compressed text, file preview, auto mount features. Okay, right, so we also have some different views that we can do inside of these folders. Let's jump into pictures. I do believe they have their wallpaper folder in here. Perfect. Okay, so we have a couple of ways we can lay things out. We're currently in the grid view. So we can go for a list by clicking this button here which will also give you the details of size time modified and type now we have another view here and clicking that will then be the same list view but then also a preview so clicking on any file here like an image will then give you a preview of the current image and give you some details of it and you can also tag things like color kind of like you do on a mac or apple mac os product i'm not a massive fan of like tagging things but it's there for those that are so I'm going to leave it on the grid view, like so. Oh, and we can also have it in grid and still have the information there. That's pretty cool as well. Okay, what we're going to do now is jump into our USB folder here, and we're going to copy some stuff over and then test it out in some applications. Let's make a new folder here called image, and then we're going to copy music onto the desktop and image into the images folder like so drag and drop perfect what i also like is this little view that you get the dialogue again looks very nice and it doesn't look out of place and it follows the theming with transparency and it also gives you an option to pause or stop and it gives you a nice little percentage there while it's going through it shouldn't take too long there's not too much there to really copy over but it does look very nice or of course we could just minimize it and get it out of the way right let's get out of that i do believe that has finished so i'm going to unplug this usb now there we go we did get a notification saying that the device had been removed okay so what we're going to do is test out the application store first so we have the deep in app store now personally i quite like the way it looks and the layout of it but you can tell it's been designed specifically for the Chinese market because a lot of the applications don't have the correct language. So like you can see here, Firefox doesn't have Firefox written there. Some do, but then the vast majority doesn't. So we're gonna test this with an application install and we're gonna do it with Synaptic, which of course is another way to manage applications. And it's not in English, so hopefully we are installing the right thing. It didn't prompt us for a password. Did we press install properly? Okay, it doesn't appear to ask you for a password for package installations. So going into download now, we can get a status of how long it's got left. And again, we could pause it or cancel. 
So I believe this button up here was going to be for the deep in cloud sync stuff. But of course we won't be able to do that because we won't be able to make an account for it. And again we got a notification at the top there that it had complete. So it will be in our notifications right there. So let's clear all of those now. Cool. Right, so we also have an update section here. And then we also have a My App section, which is going to be all of your installed applications. And you can go through and install one by one and then go to your next page there. Yeah, it's a fairly nice looking application store. It would be nice if they did the translations for package names, because then you might actually use it more than what you would right now. So that's the application store or the app store. Next up, we're going to check out Album, which is this little one here, which is an actual like a uh, image library to manage your fo folders fo uh, photos and like important for cameras and usbs etc and it is also an image viewer for when you're just in a folder and you double click on an image like so so that will just open it up in the image viewer which gives you a few options here to go to the next image we have a size of one to one a fit to window And then we also have rotate buttons like so and a delete button with a little trash can so let's get out of that and let's actually look at this album view now so if we go back into our desktop and just drag and drop this it should import all of those images pretty easily and we have a little slider here so depending on how large the sort of amount of the collection of photos you have here you might want to have it all the way down or if you only had a few you might want it like so so we can now go into timelines which will then have it ordered by date and then of course albums will have it by albums that you might want to create so clicking on a picture you can go to favorite and then if you jump into your favorites anything that you have favorited will appear there or of course if you've image, uh, named it something you can then search for it there so i could go nix or oh, maybe i didn't name it <laughs> and of course you've got your removable devices to the left there as well Okay, next up, we're going to check out their music application, which is Deep in Music. <clears throat> so again, we're going to test it out of a simple drag and drop. Okay, that's worked. That is loading the music. And I'm going to make sure we are muted. So if anything plays, I don't get any weird strikes on the video. We are muted. And it also goes into our system tray there as well. Okay, so let's test out a folder. Can we double click and play? We can indeed. So here's our little seeker there and it's got nice little spikes where the audio appears so i quite like that look to the left we have the skip tracks and pause button and again a lot like the album application we can favorite things so if we favorite this track with a little heart and then went into my favorites it would then appear there very cool and then we can change it to looping and audio volume there and we have a playlist button here i do believe a play cue button which i then open up the playlist in a transparent kind of view over the top of the window looking very nice indeed so we also have an applicator uh, playlist so we can press this little plus and create a playlist yep let's call this one tunes and i do believe it should be as simple as just dragging and dropping a couple of things over like so so that should now be in tunes brilliant that's very handy i like that indeed so let's close this one off and of course, we can even just minimize it to the tray or we could exit it entirely, which is what we are going to do. So let's exit that. OK, next up is the deep in videos or movie file program. So let's go into movie, the deep in movie program application. And now let's test it out by just dragging and dropping a video into that. So we have our Nitrix video right there. So let's go for that. OK. Now, I do believe we can just tap to pause, we can indeed, and then tap again to play. And I think a double click, a quick double click, will then open it in full screen view like so. And then we can exit it. And again, we have a little playlist button here, which much like the music application, will open it up in a transparent sort of pop-up window over the top of the video so you can still see. So now let's get rid of that. And what I want to do is check out their capture program which i'm quite excited about because i've heard good things so if we're going to capture now it's more than just a screenshot application you can do quite a bit so you might have noticed it automatically finds windows and will draw a grid around it or you can just manually make a little grid like so 
and then you can go to record which will record an animated moving image and you also have options to annotate it with image uh, text and sort of drawings and if you go into options you could then even change the format show cursor or where you want to save it so by default it's going to the clipboard we want to go for desktop so now we're going to go to record and there'll be a little button here which we can press and it will give us a countdown let's make sure we're playing the video and it will go down into our system tray there with a flashing icon and when we are done we'll just press that and it will stop recording so let's press that now done so we got some notifications letting us know it started and finished so here it right here it is right there on our screen there and as you can see for a gif it's not too bad quality and it is of course moving so this could be very handy for people who like sharing little animations on twitter and things like that okay right what i want to do now is test out the hibernation because we do have a 16 gb swap for, uh, partition so that should be just about enough so let's open that and let's also open the deep in calendar and let's open one more program let's choose what should we choose let's have a look um let's go for their voice notes application there we go so we can create a notebook oh that's quite nice i like this little notebook application as well so yeah it's really nice actually so it's ordered like that with different notebooks there and you can do voice memos no that's cool as well i like this application as well deep in suite of applications is very well designed and polished it's specifically for the deep in desktop right we're going to test hibernation now so let's go into our little power button here which of course is also in the smaller view right about here so that will open up it in full screen and we're going to click hibernate so i'm going to pause the video now and hopefully when we come back everything that's on the screen now will be there when we start back up okay so we're just starting back up now it didn't take any time at all for it to actually suspend to disk so as long as it has worked and brings up the applications that were there beforehand that's been a success and the hibernate has worked absolutely fine so let's log in and hopefully all of those applications are there right where we left them brilliant so uh, hibernation works absolutely fine indeed right what we're going to try now is we're going to jump into synaptic which we installed earlier and as you can see when you do a new installation you'll get a little dot next to it basically indicating to you it's a new application that hasn't been opened yet so if we press that type in our password and we are going to check this one out and see how much applications we have got installed out of the box bearing in mind there'll be a few additional because we installed synaptic so applications out the box we have 1768 while we're here we might as well install htop like so so let's go and mark that for installation and click apply yep done okay let's jump into htop actually and see what it's giving us right now before we do a reboot and see how much it's using at boot okay so we are using 1.27 gb out of 15.5 we're not in any of the swap at the moment i'm interested to see what the actual swap size uh, value is so let's take a look at that can we do a can we make the text any larger in here easily let's go into settings so we can just yeah we just do it in here why not eh? there we go right let's see how much the swappiness value is perfect so that's what i would set it to personally anyway which is 10. so a lot of other distributions tend to have 60 as the default which means you're going to go into your swap a bit more than you really need to so having it as 10 out of the box is pretty decent to be fair so before we do a final reboot i just want to test out a couple more things of just how it's like to use applications multiple applications with windows snapping and all of that good stuff so here's our firefox application and can we drag and drop and snap we can let's test it out with this one here perfect and can we restore it just by dragging it to the same size we can indeed and do we have a shortcut to do it by the keyboard let's just double check that so let's go into our keyboard once more and go back into shortcuts and see if there's a window split so screenshots display window launcher oh we also have 
keyboard shortcuts to display the overviews and the window spread. So there's the actual window spread, which is Super and W. So what are we looking for? We want split, window split. So we have window maximize, restore, move, resize. Okay, I can't actually see a split to the left or right of a keyboard shortcut. Okay, not to worry. I'm sure you could set one with a custom applicator keyboard shortcut there. Right, what we're going to do then to wrap it up is we are going to change it to a different wallpaper for when we log in, just to make sure that's all working as it should. So let's go to wallpaper and screensaver. And let's go to wallpaper slideshow and go to when login. Right, we're now going to reboot, get a fresh RAM reading, and we're going to wrap it up there, but I'm actually really impressed so far. But we'll see what it's actually like when we do a fresh boot and how much RAM it's using as well. Okay, so we're just starting back up. So hopefully our wallpaper is going to be a new one. It is indeed. Very nice. And now let's open up HTOP and see how much RAM we are using. Well, okay, that's quite low. I thought it was going to be a bit higher than that. When you consider how much of a sort of flashy desktop deepen is and how much is going on, to have only 570 megabytes RAM at boot, it's pretty impressive to be fair. And I did read in the release notes that they've done some work to optimize CPU usage. And as you can see, every thread there is pretty much at almost 0%. So do you know what? I'm really impressed with this release. I was similarly impressed with the beta, but this final version has really brought everything together and has made a well-polished and easy to use desktop. That's been deep in version 20. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.